Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another edition of Up and In It. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's completely dedicated to creating an alternative lifestyle design that improves quality of life for both people and for the planet, exploring alternatives to the daily grind through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life. Rah! Uh, this is part three. Uh, and this is actually, before we get into that, this is a potty mouth podcast, so parental discretion advised. Uh, it should have been called the potty mouth podcast because it's a, uh, yeah, complete uh, carpeted with F-bombs. We try to restrain, but it's very difficult. But this is part three of uh, why you should consider uh, living, doing stationary RV, meaning that it's not RVing as you guys are probably used to hearing about where you travel around the uh, United States or the world for that matter. It's about getting into an RV park where it's super cheap, super helpful. Whether you want to save up for uh, buying a house or get out of debt, it's one of the most best options that I can think of out there, especially with our present situation. I believe it's April 14th today. It's Tuesday and we're going to get into it. But uh, before I do, if you guys want to check out, I gave you the uh, introduction of why you should consider uh, stationary RVing. And then we did part one, or I'm sorry, part two of uh, what to, uh, w w getting into it, what you need to uh, like consider and everything. And, and we pretty much left off on part two at the essentials. And we never got to finish them because there's so much to add. So that's what this episode is about. It's all about uh, the essentials. And we're going to do a little bit of extras today. So stay tuned. We're going to give you everything you guys need from my personal experience of living full-time in RV uh, for three years now. Uh, I said off and on, I believe, on the on part two. But what I meant by that was that I've actually lived uh, off and on before uh, hand in, in the past. So... I did a whole thing, I believe, on community living. And that's I, I uh, lived in a community in my trailer with my family of four with the dog. And uh, you might want to check that one out as well. But let's get into it. This is the essentials. We're going to finish off there. And the very first one is the man sink. <laughs> I coined this one because I think it could save uh, relationships, marriages, all kinds of shit. Uh, it's just jokes, folks. I like to get fucking cute. And it's called the Manseek, and it's basically a five-gallon bucket, hot glued with a two-inch drain that goes into a, uh, what do they call it, the stink trap. So it's basically, basically kind of looks like an S. So all of my dishes, everything, I, I'm an outdoors person. I cook all of, everything on my barbecuer. Pretty much all cooking is done. I don't even use my stove in my trailer, and that was in part two to tell you why. But I prefer to be outdoors even in the winter, and that's living in Sunnyside, Southern California in... Um, North County, San Diego. So we really have mild temperatures, but the significance of the man sink is that you have the gray water tank inside your RV or your trailer. By the way, we're just going to refer to it as an RV. I don't know why, but people uh, call a travel trailer like an RV. Yeah, your RV. I'm like, that's not an RV. That's a recreational vehicle. It's not a recreational vehicle, but it's called an RV. But for the sake of making things simple, instead of making all these stupid, boring references, we're going to reference to it as an RV. This goes for fifth wheels. This goes for a motorhome. This also goes for a travel trailer. So yeah, the man sink, every time you're done cooking everything, you kind of rinse stuff out. Uh, I've got a water hose with a special uh, polyurethane lined hose. So it's non-toxic, especially for, uh, you know, if you're going to drink water, uh, if you're going to use it around for dishes and cooking and things of that nature, you definitely don't want to use a regular garden hose. They stink. They're full of toxins. Look it up. They're very bad for you. But yeah, the man sink is really cool. It's just a piece of sheet of plywood. I made a little table thing, cut out a round hole that a five-gallon bucket sits in, and uh, no garbage disposal. You know, we use, unfortunately, right now is paper towels. Uh, if you guys know about me, I'm about the environment. But in the hustle and working your ass off, you've got to utilize everything you've got, uh, everything you can. You can't do everything. So pardon myself. Pardon myself for using them for now. It just, I don't know, man. I'm so conscientious. It makes me feel bad. I'm like, damn, I'm using a limb of a tree. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you wipe out your oils, especially even though you got the man sink, you don't want to be dumping oils down there, but wipe out everything as clean as you can. Dump it down a bucket. I'm sorry, in a trash can. Use the man sink that's got a nice high pressure nozzle. I've got one that it's, it's like one of those garden uh, nozzles that switches to like mist, to jet, to shower and you can just mess around with this thing and i rinse off all my utensils as, as soon as i'm done cooking also uh um 
after we're done eating, before we take them in the house to wash, it makes washing a lot easier because there's a lot less food stuck to it, but it saves that gray tank from just getting slimy and stinky. And you, trust me, it's like everything that goes down in your sink goes into a enclosed reservoir. And you can imagine with all the food and everything, there's really no way to get in there and clean it. I really wish that they would make some, uh, for all of those of you listening, Jayco and uh, Heartland and everybody, why don't you guys make the same thing you do for the black water tank, which is a, a little hose that goes in there with a sprayer nozzle inside the tank that spins around and kind of rinses, jets everything out. So when you flush it, you kind of, you know, you rinse it. But for now, we don't have that technology. Uh, we're still cave people. <laughs> rinse your bones down the fucking man sink before you take them inside. It'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, next one is a pond. A pond has many, many uses. I spoke about this in my stacking functions uh, show, uh, previous episodes. But a pond's really nice when you're living a stationary RV. It uh, gives you privacy from sound. Uh, I've got my butt up against my shed, so it kind of reverberates the sound of running water. So when you're having a conversation, it's less likely that people could hear all the madness that you're talking about every single fucking day, you know, or when you're talking and answering yourself. <laughs> But yeah, no, it gives an ambiance uh, as far as the sound as well. It's very soothing, very calming. Um, it does make you want to piss every fucking hour. <laughs> um, but yeah, having fish in there, and I actually turned mine into like a, a little mini aquaponics system. I don't want to get in too far detail, but I've got kale growing out of mine, mint tea, or I'm sorry, mint plant, which uh, my daughter and I will pick every, almost every night. We'll pick off a couple leaves, smash them up, and make some hot tea, uh, mint tea with honey. I've got peppermint, chocolate peppermint, I think it is, and then a regular mint and kale growing in there. So it's really cool. Fish are proven to, to uh, be very calming. So I've got uh, about three goldfish in there. They're about, ooh, I'd say about eight inches long by now. So it's really cool just to have just something to gaze at and it does a lot of purposes. So I advise you guys to get some sort of running water feature and uh, it really helps out for privacy of sound and also just for, for ambience. So consider that, and it's not a whole lot of money. Mine's basically made out of a water trough that's meant for uh, like a cow, an animal. I think it's like 75 gallons or something. Go down to Home Depot and get yourself a little water pump, and uh, the water pump's in there. Uh, last, what I'll say is about it is when you put the uh, plants in together, uh, it's the aquaponics system. It actually balances out the uh, bad stuff to the good stuff. I'll just leave it at that. Oxygenates the water. And um, it's just, you don't have to use filtration or nothing. I've been running mine for over, uh, shit, I think like three, four years now. And no filters, no nothing. Just let everything run. The fish are fine. And goldfish actually like eating the uh, algae and stuff. And they eat the roots of the plants. So essentially, I almost don't even have to feed them. But I do anyways because I love them. Uh, it's very cute, I'll say, in the morning. Uh, sometimes I'd get up at like 5, 6 in the morning to go to work. Before we were on fucking lockdown, and uh, I called the, the female bubbles because when you turn the uh, pump on, back on in the morning, I shut it up at night to save energy, uh, she just starts swimming through the bubbles. Like She just gets all excited. Like That's part of her day, and they know it's feeding time, so they get excited, and just really cool. Um, under your trailer, we want to utilize all space. Cause as I said on the show, uh, on part, part one and two, we're living in a fucking hallway. There's not a lot of space. So you're going to go get yourself those heavy duty black totes with the yellow lids. You can find them at Walmart, Home Depot, Costco, everywhere. These things are really built very well. They're very reasonably cost. I think it's like eight bucks for like a, a nice good sized um, tote. And you're going to want to put a lot of stuff in there. Like I, I like to store everything, my, even my firewood, uh, extra winter clothes or summer clothes, uh, canned goods, all kinds of just whatever you need. There's tons of room to go under your trailer and to store these things to keep them out from the dust, keep them out from the rain, keep them out from the varmints, you know, the spiders and the ants and co cockroaches. Uh, yeah, keep them in there and uh, uh, keep all your stuff safe. It's nice and cool down there because it's shaded too and it's out of sight. You can put like a little skirting or something of some sort, like some bamboo fencing or something so you don't see all the, the uh, boxes in there. But you go about two deep, you know, uh, one, one behind and one in front. Uh, one of the hacks that I've done is taking some PVC pipe, some leftover stuff and some, some salvage things that I found in the trash. Uh, cut these things into about six foot lengths and uh, just lay them down in the dirt or the gravel that's underneath your trailer. And then when you lay your boxes on top, especially if you got things like firewood, you can push them in. They slide in and out really easy uh, instead of going against the gravel and trying to, you know, if you got a lot of weight in there. So that's one little tip there. 
So utilize the under uh, storage of your trailer. So speaking of varmints, uh, <laughs> these, uh, the mice and rats could get fucking intense. I think it depends on some, whatever year, sometimes they just proliferate. Last year they got in and ate, uh, probably about $90 to hundred dollars worth of my special needs daughter's diapers. And, uh, I'm not one to kill mice and rats. I love to live with nature. I'm a permaculturalist. I'm a naturalist. I love everything about nature. I want to protect it, but you know what? We fenced off the earth and we've stopped the, the good, the, the flow of everything happening. So, uh, some people might not like this, but hey, man, you know what? We don't have the coyotes. We don't have the owls and the hawks able to go and hunt these these creatures. And they go crazy. And when they eat my special needs daughter's diapers, they basically rip it all up. It makes for nests. They pissed and shit inside of it. I had to throw everything away. And uh, I wasn't too happy. So rat traps, mice traps. Uh, you've got to go down and get yourself some traps and get that set up because you they're in the walls. I've heard them climbing in there. Uh, it's also, I remember living in Oregon for a while. They actually chewed the uh, PEX pipe for the, the water uh, to get because they were thirsty. Uh, I don't understand why. There's, it's always raining in, in Oregon, but they went in there, they chewed the water lines, and we had to replace multiple areas of, of high-pressured water lines. Uh, these guys will go in there and start messing with the electrical, eating up the, uh, uh, the insulation in the walls, and it, it just gets insane. So you want to get yourself some rat traps. There's a difference and also some mice traps. They're in different sizes. And I'll give you guys a tip. You want to alternate your bait. Uh, one tip I'll give you too is get yourself some cotton uh, cotton balls and uh, uh, shred those all up in your hand. Line them with peanut butter or whatever you're, you're using as bait, chocolate, and uh, stick them. There's like a little cup in the middle of the trap. You want to put that cotton ball saturated with... Uh, fat or uh, peanut butter or whatever you got because the mice will actually get in there and they'll they'll start biting at it and the cotton actually sticks the the bait to the uh, cup on the inside of the trap so it gets stuck in their teeth and they'll, they'll start messing with it a lot more instead of just having a, a wad of cheese or peanut butter in there that actually in matter of days actually hardens up it's like a piece of candy they just they can reach over very softly and just pick up that little ball and they're gone with no signs got to make them work for it i know it's uh probably horrible to think that way but man when these guys are pissing and shit in your home in your stove getting into eating your clothes and everything you, you can't you, you got to do something you got to thin the fucking herd so yeah that's that's my tip for you guys and alternate your baits do one week peanut butter do one week chocolate do one week the uh they have like a mouse scent stuff you can buy at home depot uh again i'm not affiliated with any of this stuff i'm not going to give you guys brands i have no sponsors no nothing uh, but yeah, you want to alternate whatever you're doing every week because they get bored. I think sometimes they get uh, tired of the same old stuff and they're, they're picky. So do that. The other thing we have is ants. And I've seen people freaking the fuck out, running out of their fucking trailer, screaming, Oh my, I can't take it. I'm going to kill something. And basically what happens is these ants because they can smell sugar and, and food in your home. I mean, you can imagine even with the mice, when you're cooking, like especially outdoors or inside, and you drop just a crumb, that's like a cheeseburger. You know, a tiny little wad of cheese the size of a grain of rice, or even a grain of rice is like, it's like a burrito for them. And uh, for, the, for the ants, it's like, oh my God, you know? They just had a huge, huge, just this huge giant cheeseburger, this food ready for it. So of course they're gonna come in. Um, I want to tell you guys real quick a story where uh, with ants is I had these ants one time that climbed up a tree. This was literally f hundreds of feet that they, the, the, the ingenuity of these creatures, they went all the way up all the tree, up, up the bark, down the limbs, down the leaf, up to the canopy on a pipe, down the, the canopy, up the other side. And it finally, I, I traced them all the way into my trailer. And I, I actually, uh, I did what I'm going to uh, tell you guys right now, how, what to use. I blocked them off, but I gave them like a little, a big old piece of meat and some, some candy and stuff left. And I said, you guys worked your asses off. You guys deserve this. <laughs> but uh, here's the trick. So you have everything that's touching your trailer. You don't want anything touching your trailer. Remember I told you guys about the storage boxes underneath? Make sure there's a good space between that and the bottom of your trailer. Uh, these ants will climb up anything a water hose a cable line 
uh, anything o over your wheels, onto the axles, and then up to the bottom of your trailer. And they, they'll crawl on you while you're sleeping. That's why the uh, I seen that woman freaking out. You're just sleeping. They're in your ear. They're crawling in your mouth. It just drives you insane. They're all over in your food. So you can do a couple of things like diatomaceous earth, and you can do your poison and your things like that. But you know what I prefer to do? is go, it's a beekeeper's secret. You go and you uh, take a uh, uh, axle grease, which is not quite friendly for the planet, but uh, I'll give you a hint. I use it for my uh, biodegradable container gardening through just a little bit. That's all you need. And what you do is you, you paint a very light coat, say around uh, your axle, uh, right where, you, so you have your tires, right? They're gonna climb up your tire. They have to go around the tire and over to the axle and then up your brake lines or up the leaf springs. So right at that, that that joint where your axle meets your tire, your tire, just paint yourself a little ring of axle grease on that. You're also going to want to do your water hoses, your electric line, and also your cable TV or ethernet line for your, your internet. I did everything and forgot about the tiny little cable that came from my internet and I found them climbing up that. So you really, you want to coat all of these things. The, the, the jack stands that I spoke about in an episode in part uh, two, uh, everything that's touching your trailer, just give it a little ring of about, I'd say about two inches wide and they will not cross that thing. Yes, it's not that great for the environment using grease, but instead of killing ants and putting poison out that your cats could eat or other animals and rodents and stuff like that, you can merely deflect them and send them over to your neighbor's house. <laughs> so that's my uh, tips for that. I, I know I got a hell of a lot more, man. There's just so much we can go on. Uh, the other one I'll say with the ants I almost forgot was Blue Dawn Soap. If you don't want to use axle grease, uh, unfortunately, the soap will not last as long as axle grease. Uh, to tell you guys, too, I've had, I only got to do it maybe twice a year. As we go over there and re repaint some, some grease all over everything. Uh, what happens is the dirt starts to stick to it a little bit, but the smell really gets them. Um, but the other thing you could use is Blue Dawn Soap. I learned from an old woman at uh, some grocery store. Some, for some reason, it's got to be the blue, though. And you can use this in your house, anywhere. Just mix it up uh, about 50-50 with water. Put it in a spray bottle and spray anywhere where you don't want them to come. Um, I've actually used the Blue Dawn on Black Widows and Brown Widows because we have a ton over here sometimes. It's, it's a complete infestation. Again, I don't want to hurt the uh, nature, but had a Brown Widow climbing on the my daughter's face uh, about the size of a, a quarter. And that really scared the shit out of us. You know, it's no joke when you get bit by these guys, by the way. So I've had success even spraying them with the Dawn soap. And I could have swore that they, uh, it killed them for some weird reason it, it the blue Dawn soap killed them. And it's, you know, it's very, uh, eco-friendly, uh, moving on to the next, you have meat bees and, uh, yeah. So this is where the bug assault comes in, in play. Uh, the bug assault is actually a small little air rifle thing. It's a little air gun. It's, you know, it's you, anybody could buy one. I don't think there's an age limit or something, but it shoots salt. Uh, you just basically get iodized salt and you put it in there and it shoots like a shotgun. I've got the 2.0 or 2.5. I think it is. It's a lot more accurate and harder, uh, shoots a lot further distance. Again, I don't want to hurt the meat bees, but my special needs daughter has been bitten in the lip and the neck. Uh, we're just trying to eat some food, hanging outside, and these guys are relentless, man. They will just come after you. Tell you another story. I was camping in the uh, uh, over by Yosemite, and what do they call that fucking mountain range? What is that place? I can't remember. Maybe it'll come back to me. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a whole, the whole name of the mountain range back there. But anyway, next to uh, uh, Sierra Mad uh, Sierra Nevada Mountains. Yeah, there you go. I was eating, caught myself, myself a trout for breakfast out of the stream, which is so awesome. I camped there for like a month, me and my uh, my ex-wife and my buddy, and uh, caught myself my trout, and I'm, I cooked it, and I'm eating it for breakfast, and there was just the same thing, those meat bees just coming after me. So I finally just gave up. Sitting there with my plate, you could see one just took a huge chunk, man. I mean a huge chunk. Bit the, the sawed it off. I was just in amazement, like, wow, look at him go to work. Give him a piece of fish. Well, as he took a big giant chunk of my fish and went to fly away, this weird little black wasp, about twice the size of him, just came and snatched the meat bee midair and just flew away with him. I guess to eat him, like he was hunting him. So it's just crazy natural uh, occurrence. There's some National Geographic shit. I don't know why. I'll never forget that, man. It was crazy. But yeah, uh, the bug assault gun will actually work with uh, flies and mosquitoes, which we're going to get into here. I've got, a, I got another tip for you. 
But uh, yeah, when you're eating your food and there, there's a couple of them flying around you, you can use the, uh, the, here's the reason you want to use the bug assault rifle. But basically what it does too is it shoots the salt and just incapacitates them. It's, most of the time it doesn't kill them unless you get them point blank. But uh, that's when you, once you shoot them, get your uh, fly swatter and just put them out of their misery and, and, and whack, give them a good whack. The reason why I don't like using the fly swatter is that you miss them and then these guys get pissed off and then they really start swarming. So the bug assault uh, it's kind of a lot nicer because you're able to just, once they start landing all over your food or uh, getting all over, the, you can just kind of shoot them out of the air, shoot them off the surface, and then, uh, you know, step on them or discard them as, at will. But it works really good for uh, for flies. I want to mention two guys that I've learned. There's these hover flies. They got this pointy abdomen, this pointy butt. And uh, I did some research. I didn't follow it all the way through. But what these guys are, if you notice, just sit and study. Uh, what I'm telling you guys, don't shoot them with your salt gun because these guys are actually pollinators, I believe, and they don't bother people. They never land on you. You see them hovering around. If you guys ever been like on your porch or something, they're just hovering around. You know, they're not doing anything. I, from what it said is that they, uh, they, uh, they're called hoverflies, by the way, and they, they, they do that to stay away from prey. I've seen them actually literally like chasing each other. I think they're fighting for territory or something. But yeah, don't shoot those guys. They like to go. I've seen some on the flowers of my garden. Uh, leave those guys alone. But the other flies, game on, hunting season's on, man. I mean, we've had, when my dog was alive, which I missed the fuck out of, man, my little hazel baby, 17 years old, guys, she made it to 17, died of a fucking twisted stomach. Uh, message, message me below if you've ever lost, you know, something like that. I've had her since she was a pup. Missed that fucking dog. But the flies would be crawling all over her eyes and everything and just it would not leave her in her ears. They'd be crawling all over me. So I have... I have compassion for all nature, but you know they're, they're, you got to draw the line somewhere. Uh, same thing with the mosquitoes. So the way we combated that, not only with the salt, the bug assault gun, again, which I'm not affiliated with, and either the magnetic screens, but in your shed, in your if you get one like I've got here, or in your trailer, uh, put these things up as the magnetic screens. You can just walk right through. You don't have to yell at the kids. Shut the fucking door, please. You know, <laughs> you can just have them. Uh, uh, you walk right through and it just zips right back up. And that keeps the mosquitoes and it keeps the flies off of you. The last one I want to mention about the uh, mosquitoes is uh, that when they're inside your house, when you go to bed, well, there's two things. Uh, when they're, you, at nighttime, for some reason, turn on the lights before you go to bed. They'll all be on the ceiling. So instead of swatting them with the fly swatter and getting blood or guts on your ceiling, get this bug assault rifle and uh, just shoot them. They're, they're, you just go point blank and just blast them right off your ceiling and then you can just sweep them up off the floor and uh this helps without smearing stuff all over so you have to go and wash it and it, i think it ends them really quick uh but yeah the other thing i'd say is that the uh, light i'm not sure if i said that yet there's a there's a little bug light that i got uh it's basically works with a it's got a blue light um that attracts uh bugs right flying insects moths and those kind of things which i feel bad for because i really don't care to kill the moth but every once in a while they get inside the, the uh, trailer and uh they got to go, I guess. But the mosquitoes get to so you hear it buzzing. It also has one of those sound things that's supposed to keep away mice. A bunch of fucking bullshit. Don't buy into that. But get it for the uh, for the light. Get yourself a little tiny bug light. It's maybe like, I don't know, about four inches uh, long by about two inches wide. You just plug it in every night, and that helps to keep the mosquitoes down as well. Uh, DIY plastic fence. Oh my God, this thing's going on forever, isn't it, guys? I hope you guys are still with me. I've got so much for you here. Uh, Do-it-yourself uh, pet fence. Uh, also for special needs animals, your kids. <laughs> Dude, look at I love my kids. I'm just fucking kidding around. That's what we do on the show. So please don't get offended. We're trying to make some funnies, man. Life, look at the, you got to laugh. If, if you ain't got your funnies, what the fuck do you got, man? So come on, lighten up. I don't want to hear, you know, any hate stuff, but... Yeah, to keep my special needs critter inside the, the uh, yard and also my dog when I had her was a PVC fence. I'll try to explain this in words. It's probably better in a video. But what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself some half inch PVC pipe that they use for plumbing. Get the schedule 40. It's the extra thicker stuff, not the thinner stuff. It'll say it on there and most likely red letters, schedule 40. Uh, if you can't, doesn't say anything, you can't tell the difference. Uh, go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you're, sh you're uh, shopping at and look at the inside di diameter, the thickness of the pipe. The schedule 40 is a lot thicker. You don't want the super thin stuff. The sun will eat that shit and it'll warp. So use schedule 40. You're going to use yourself uh, per panel. 
you're going to have four elbows, four uh, uh, 45 degree um, uh, elbows, and you're going to have two T's. And you're, these pipes are five feet long, so you're going to cut them in half at five foot. And uh, that's going to give you your top rail and your bottom rail. And then you're going to measure, I think these fences are four feet uh, uh, wide, these plastic roll fences. And you're going to have to cut off and you'll have some excess from your another 10 foot. You're going to cut it about four feet there. Uh, you'll have to mark them all out. I, I can't go into crazy detail here, but just mark them out. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to lay it on this green plastic fencing they have. Don't get the fluorescent orange. Uh, it looks ugly. Get the green. It matches a lot better. But if, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before on construction sites where it's a plastic uh, fencing. It looks like chicken wire, but it's made out of uh, plastic. Very lightweight, very durable. Uh, and you're, what you're going to do is you're going to interweave these pipes into the uh, like the plastic chicken wire, and you're going to connect them at elbows at uh, each corner, and you're also going to cut the uh, top rail and the bottom rail in half, and you're going to put a T there for support. And uh, so you basically have like a five by four foot panel made out of PVC and plastic. You can literally lift up 10 of these above your head. Uh, you can zip tie them together. So that's like a like a book, like a, I don't know how you can explain it. Like they, they just uh, they scissor together. And then when you're ready to open them up, uh, you can just you, you pull them. They strand out. And you can zip tie them to post uh, to your canopy or wherever you got. And that'll make an instant dog. A uh, little kennel or it'll, it'll fence off your area so other people's dogs don't come and shit on your gravel. I've had that where neighbors in the RV park, they just let their dogs roam around. So you wake up in the morning, go step over your car and step in a pile of dog shit. So uh, these fences, they look nice. They're very cheap, a lot cheaper than buying pet fences. Uh, but they, they stack functions. You can hang your dirty underwear. <laughs> just kidding. You can hang your, your uh, wet towels and stuff on them to dry them up. And uh, you can even put some... Uh, like I did zip tie some bamboo to kind of for some privacy. It's just really nice. Actually, I use them for when me and my kids go on our uh, travels. Yeah, for those of you guys don't know about me, I, I go on mini va retirements, I call them for three, four months out of the year. Me and my kids will go just up camping up north, you know, by Oregon or Northern California, the coast, places where you still drive up on the beach. And when I had my dog and we'd stop at regular campsites, you could take these things with you and just open them up and easily make a dog kennel. They're lightweight and very portable and very durable. Uh, the next one for pets is the gravel bed pet potty, I'm gonna call it. Uh, it's kind of like a French drain. So when I basically moved here, uh, I had my dog uh, peeing and shit, and I've learned because we moved so many times, Usually when a dog you have or a cat finds an area that they decide is going to be their shitter, they will constantly go and shit in that place. So you want to make sure you set an area, designate an area up. So what I did when I first moved in here for a tip for you guys, if you got pets, especially a dog, is uh, get yourself some uh, hay or some wood, wood shavings or something. Go to the furthest point. That's where it's not going to stink. Lay that all in there. Take your dog. Let them smell it. Keep an eye on them for the first day or two. As soon as they look like they got a pee, Pull them over there and put them in that area. Let them pee. They'll know that that's the area to go. So after you get them designated and that's their area, you, they know that that's the area to pee. I want you to go and take a shovel and I want you to dig about two feet to 18 inches would be preferable. Dig yourself a pit about three by, oh, I'd say uh, three by three, three by four, whatever space you got. Dig that down. Uh, get rid of the dirt. Go take it out to uh, the field and dump it. And what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself some crushed rock or gravel. And you're going to line the whole thing with just gravel. Just fill up the pit, right? Uh, to make it easy, you can go get yourself some of that weed cloth if you want to to put over the gravel. And then you're going to go. It's cheaper than wood shavings. Go buy yourself a bale of straw. Not hay, but uh, straw. Uh, the reason why uh, I started using pine needles, which are a disinfectant. Uh, they got an aroma on them too when the sun hits them, so it kind of helps with the, the piss smell. But I think my dog got a couple of those pine needles stuck in, in between her fingers, so it's not a good idea. Uh, I prefer either the wood chips, better yet, get yourself a bale of hay. It'll last you like shit. I mean, my dog was like 60, 70 pounds. It lasted me for like six months. Just pull yourself off some of the, uh, the uh, uh, straw and line the whole top of the rocks with it. You can uh, sprinkle some water on it. That'll help settle it so it doesn't really blow away in the wind. It kind of mats it all down. It feels comfortable for the dog, and uh, they like to piss and shit on it. The nice thing is it's a nice light beige color, so every time they shit, you gotta be diligent and go pick it up. But the shit tur uh, sticks out like a sore thumb. You can see it all black, unless you get a little leaf storm or something. But yeah, pick it up diligently, and then every time you pick it up, grab yourself, remember from the man sink, you got the hose, 
put that on a shower and just rinse off that little poopy area so they don't step on any little crumbs. And what happens with the piss and the shit is that every time you rinse this off, it goes down and fills up like probably, shit, I'd say like 70 gallons of, of area where that the, the piss and shit could go and it slowly seeps into the earth. And um, eventually you're gonna have to change the hay, but it, it really helps with the aroma of the pee and the poop and everything, as long as you stay on it. And it keeps your dog healthy and keep, being confined in a small space really helps out, especially if you got to leave your dog for a while while you're, you know, going grocery shopping or something like that. Uh, so that that really helps. Next is synthetic turfs and their uses. Uh, synthetic turfs I use as a as a doormat when we go on our travels, traveling around in my camper. Keep the sand out of the back of the truck and everything, and a nice place to sit down. But uh, the uh, it really works if you're living in an RV park and you've got concrete or gravel. If you need to get underneath your vehicle to do some work, which I do my own oil changes and things like that, you can lay that down and uh, lay on top of it, and, and it, it really helps out there. You can cut it in little pieces. Yes, it is expensive, but, man, it really helps to keep the animal hair out of your trailer, to keep the dirt and the dust and mud. I mean, you just you can hose them off. They work really good as, a, as an entryway, but it also, if you get the soft kind, especially if you're living in an RV park, it gives you kind of like a little area to be able to lay down and kind of play, do some puzzles and stuff like that. So it's, it is synthetic, it's plastic, but hey, uh, you got to do what you got to do. I built myself some outdoor cabinetry, which really works. It's when you're, as I said, if when you're cooking on your barbecue and you're doing all your cooking and everything outside with the mice and rats, they, they will get in shit in your pots and pans. It's really foul and disgusting. Uh, make yourself an outdoor shelf of some sort i've got mine with a hinge with a mat with magnets on it so when you close the door it keeps all my spices and and oils and pots and pans and utensils and everything safe from the dirt and the dust and from the wind uh, but also the mice and it's just really handy to have it there it's attached to my shed there right next to the barbecue and really really handy um one I almost forgot, guys, is water pressure. You want to get yourself a water pressure valve. Uh, you can blow the lines out of your trailer. So I think it's maximum 45 PSI, I think it was, or 60 PSI is what you want to run into your trailer so you don't blow out the uh, joints. Uh, I prefer, again, I'm not affiliated with anybody, but I prefer if you getting the brass fitting one. It basically has like this little dial, right? And then it has a little uh, uh, screw that you can screw up or down and it'll actually adjust the pressure. Uh, so that, first of all, so you don't blow your lines out. But second of all, the showers usually suck because there's not enough pressure. So you can kind of up it. You can play with it instead of getting the fixed one that just does the same thing. You can actually mess around. Uh, like say you want to take a nice hot, hot shower and with lots of good pressure, you can turn it up for a little while and you can turn it back down. For some reason, I just prefer the adjustable manual kind instead of the just fixed. Like all you get is like 35 PSI. But make sure you get some water pressure. That's very important. The other thing you're going to want to get is it's same thing as like a water pressure regulator, but it's a surge protector. Uh, you got, you can imagine the electricity coming in an RV park, the electricity is just going like this. There's all kinds of draw, you know, someone, if everybody turned their microwaves on at the same time or made up electric pot of tea, you know, it just draws and that's really could be very bad. The spikes, sometimes if uh, lightning strikes or something happens, it spikes out. A lot of your, um, your trailers are built in with a computer. All right. So that computer is what switches on, you know, a sensor that'll, that'll say, uh, if your electricity goes out, it'll turn your fridge to propane. Uh, so that thing could get fried. So it's a very good uh, idea. I don't have one I could recommend to you uh, unless somebody wants to uh, sponsor our fucked up show. Uh, before you do, we're, we're, we're going to be us, dude. We ain't changing. But yeah, I spent about 380 I think, on mine. And it basically is this thing that plugs into the, the post, the, the, the uh, media electric. And then you get your entire trailer and plug that into that. Well, this goes right in between regulates if there's ever anything ever crazy it just shuts your trailer off and saves you from uh getting damaged because as i said uh in part two to fix the wires if it fried a connection or something it's going to be a pain in the ass man you have to tear apart all the walls sometimes remove stuff so you definitely want to use a surge protector uh i use a sump pump for some reason or another i'm on the low end of the rv park and we get flooded i did a post on instagram about it and we get like about there was one time i swear we had about eight inches of water flooded up to my fridge my freezer the motor was covered in water in my freezer uh, i got everything up on blocks now just in case but i got myself a little sump pump with a hose everything set up 
be vigilant when you get your spot. If it looks like a low area, you know, uh, or the, the, usually the road's concave, they're crowned, right? So all the water coming off a road, I, if you guys want to know, I think it's like off one inch of rain, you can get like a half, I think it was, oh, what was it? I had the numbers down. I think for every square foot of space in a one inch rain, you're going to get 0.6 gallons of rain. So you can imagine a road and uh, if it's not set right and it fills up, it's just going to pour in your area and you might want to get yourself a sump pump just to get that water out so it doesn't flood and sink your trailer or your tires in the mud and everything. So be vigilant about those kind of things. Uh, next is your propane. I've got, I believe they're 35 gallon. You want to get the big ones. You don't want to mess around with those little tiny three and a half gallon ones. Uh, because if you're, if you're doing your heater, you're running your, your barbecue and everything, you'll be running for propane. You know, this is different from living in a house. People It's way different. You know, you're going to be running to get propane every, uh, every two weeks or so, if not even more, depending on the size of your family and your usage and everything. I prefer to go get the 35 gallon, the big tall ones that are roughly about four feet tall. They're heavy as shit. So if you're old, you might want to get some, or have some injuries, you might want to get something in the middle. But uh, they also have people that'll come and fill up your propane. Of course, you know, there's uh, mobile guys that'll come out and, and it's going to be a little more expensive, but they'll fill you all up. But it's best to get everything done. I mean, ours to tell you guys, 35 gallons will last us. Uh, easily six months. My barbecue, same thing, I think at least six months. I only got to go twice a year to fill up propane. So I use one of those 35 gallons for my barbecue. I use one, 135 for my trailer. Uh, I would say in the, it's been cold this winter, so we kind of using it a little bit more, but for the most part, yeah, we can live off pretty much, uh, one, uh, I'd say six months out of the year is all we need for the trailer. Cause we're just mainly use it for the water heater and the, uh, uh, and the, the, the central heating. So consider getting yourself a bigger one. Yes, yeah, so you save some trips. Uh, you can also, on number two, or next here, you can block out your uh, skylights. Uh, they've got these little pillow fuzzy things you can buy, and these are the skylights that go over your bed. Uh, it's very nice to keep them so uh, uh, close so it keeps out the sun uh, from waking you up if you don't like light and you want some privacy, uh, but it also helps with the heat. Uh, a cheaper way that I like is getting yourself some of that bubble tape, bubble tape, like foil stuff. It's like a bubble wrap, but it's got foil on it. You can cut out uh, little perfect little squares of that and you can stuff those inside your skylights. And not only will that insulate it from the heat, but it'll also keep the light out as well. Next is privacy screens. I've seen these really cool things where they got like these scenes, right? Like Arizona, like cactuses and stuff or rock formations. And uh, you can... I believe you can, no, you can't see out. And I don't think anybody could see in, but it lets the air out. It's got holes in it. So basically you can set up like this whole, like a TV screen almost, like a, a tapestry. So if you're right butt up on your neighbor and, uh, you know, he can look out his window and just see right into your your place. You can put these things up in front and it makes it very, uh, very neat. Very, you know, some of them have like sunsets and themes and stuff or like an ocean. So uh, those things are pretty neat. Those things are pretty neat to have. So you should look into it. Let's go into the maintenance and I think the accessories, if you guys want to listen on Facebook, uh, up and in it, I'm going to probably give you guys some thoughts on some accessories that you guys could use and some more ideas. So if I don't finish with this one, consider checking out the Facebook group up and in it and I'll have some extra material there on this subject matter. All right. So this is the RV maintenance part. This is what you want to keep up on your, your rig. You, you need to do essentials that you need, to, unless you want to uh, rot and you want to get leaks and stuff. You want to keep these things up and it'll help for resale value and just basically prolong the life of the thing. So let's first off start with the roof sealants. You want to go up there and you want to get, there's some self-leveling stuff. You can look online. Uh, it's kind of expensive. I think it's like $16 a tube. It comes in a caulking gun. And... What you want to do is you want to go around all your skylights and stuff, uh, any penetrations on the roof, anything that's got a hole coming through the roof, you want to go through there and you want to uh, uh, check for cracks, stress cracks and things of that nature. In roofing, uh, fixing roofs for almost all my life, we call it alligator skinned and you can see it just kind of cracking and set up. Also, there's a thing called oxidization. If you take your finger and you rub the sealant and it just starts turning into powder or leaves a powdery residue on your finger. That's time means as it's it's getting degraded. 
So what you want to do is get whatever sealant you feel comfortable with. But the very most important part is you're going to want to either pressure wash all of these sealants or you want to get a wire brush and, and scrub them with the wire brush, rinse them off, uh, clean them very well, Let, make sure they're fully and completely dry before you go and reseal anything on the roof. But check these things out regularly. If you understand when you guys are in the trailer and you're moving around, that thing's constantly flexing everywhere. And uh, those, those seams and those, uh, those sealants are flexing all the time with your trailer. So that means that they're getting weak and they're just like a rubber band over and over and over again. So every year before winter, get up there and check your sealants and do what I said, make sure it's clean and it's dr completely dry though before you apply your sealants. It's not rocket science, it's like caulking, just and it's a roof and you can't really fuck up too bad. Put yourself a nice healthy dose of it and just rub it in with your finger. Uh, one tip I'll tell you guys too, like sometimes you get a lump or something, you don't wanna just go once around like to smooth this stuff out. You kinda wanna go once, at least left to right as you're smearing the caulking on there. I prefer you go left, right, left, right around each pass around, uh, if that makes sense to you guys, around each uh, caulking ap application. Uh, the exterior fixtures, same thing you guys are going to want to watch out. Mine, I saw, I took apart the, all the lights, you know, that are up on the walls. Uh, I took one of the lights out and screwed it. And uh, sure enough, there was no sign of leakage inside the trailer. Uh, but there was mud and dirt you could see staining very slightly uh, behind the, the driving lights. So pull all those things out, inspect them, make sure there's no leaks. They come with a uh, RB putty, it's called. You can buy this online. And the same thing what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wipe this down. You don't want to wire brush this, the paint off your fucking, you know, your siding. What you want to do is, is use some soap and water, maybe get all the mud or whatever cleaned up around it. And then you're going to want to get some rubbing alcohol, some uh, isopropyl uh, uh, alcohol, and uh, wipe that all down and make sure all the contaminants, make sure you clean the light too, the, the plastic cupping, that the, the fitting, the flange. Wipe that as well. So what I did is I put myself some plumbing, uh, or I'm sorry, some uh, RV uh, putty around the perimeter. And then I also lined it with uh, some silicone around the outer, the outer area, right where, where the plastic goes. Uh, these things are attached with screws. Everything's attached with screws. Place it back in very gently, and then take the excess uh, silicone and just wipe a nice, good, clean line around the, uh, the light fixture, around the, the, uh, the uh, casing to where it touches the actual walls of your trailer. You can also go around where the doors and everything are at and do the same thing. Really uh, just wash that, that, that sealant really good and just put yourself a nice uh, thin bead of uh, silicone around the, the whole perimeter just to keep everything all nice and tidy uh, so you don't get leaks. Uh, your water heater next is uh, what you want to do is you're going to want to flush that thing out with uh, white distilled vinegar. And what you're going to find is you're going to see that there's this milky substance coming out of it. There's, there's all kinds of uh, minerals and stuff from hard water that will deposit in there. And what will happen is it will gunk everything up. And uh, there's shit. I can go on for a while on, on water heaters. Uh, you want to drain it all out. You want to fill it up, circulate it with pure vinegar. Keep rinsing it out until all the milky stuff's out. And do this uh, at least once a year. Uh, do a vinegar flush. YouTube it and take a look and you'll see what I mean. Now, there's rubber uh, flanges that go around your pop out. That's that area that slides out, uh, you know, pops out basically off the side. There's that rubber flange that goes over and that's to stop uh, critters from coming in, dirt and also water. And they make a sealant for that thing, kind of like armor all, like armor alling your uh, dashboard and things like that. Uh, your tires, you want to do the exact same thing with that. I'd say at least twice a year. I'd prefer you do it three or maybe even four. Uh, you can imagine unscrewing that stuff and having to reset it in and fit it and get it so it doesn't leak. It's going to be a pain in the ass. So do yourself a favor. Uh, wash that thing down with a hose. Wipe it all down with a nice with a rag and then spray it. Or or they make a, a one you can dip with a rag and just wipe down that stuff with the protective uh, coating that they have specialized for that rubber. Uh, the next thing you want to guys do is get on your roof uh, pretty much, I would say, in spring, fall, or sp uh, I'm sorry, fall, winter, and spring is get up and keep the leaves off there. On my pop out, the leaves got collected and that, that rubber flange we were talking about, the water was was thickening up. It was it was basically dammed so, so hard from heavy rains that it actually leaked inside my trailer just because of that. I, it took me a, a long time to figure it out. I thought it was the sealants or something that I did. Uh, but yeah, keep the leaves off. That way nothing backs up and actually goes and leaks into a vent or, or in, the, uh, in your pop-out. Um, 
If you are going to do not rake the leaves off your roof, uh, you can scratch up the coating or scratch up the skin, whatever's on there. You want to blow them off or use yourself a broom, get that off. If you want to clean it, you're going to have to get yourself a soft bristle brush, soak it down with a hose, do it first thing in the morning or later in the evening. Let it get uh, nice and uh, mushy, basically. I'd prefer if you guys did this, like say the night before, soak down your roof, as long as it's not too hot, like Arizona or something, but spray off your roof as best as you can. Let it get all the, all the stains, get all soft, all the mud. Go in the morning, spray it off again, and then get a, a brush and start brushing the roof very gently, and that'll clean everything all off. Then give it a good rinser, and you should be good to go. Uh, you want to? You have a uh, converter, and this is what's happening in mine. I gotta fix this fucking shit soon, man. You got a fan that blows it out, right? All the when it gets hot, and basically what a converter is, it's converting AC, which runs inside your home. For those of you who don't know, it converts AC power, regular electrical, into DC. DC is what runs like solar, you know, off solar panels and invert, uh, inverters and things like that in your car. So all of your uh, appliances in your trailer are run off DC power. Well, they need this converter to work to convert that energy in and it gets hot doing the, its job. What you want to do is take apart the paneling if you feel comfortable enough. There are electrical parts and you got to be careful. But get yourself one of those shop backs that's got a long straw hose and get in there and get all the dog hair and dust and keep that thing clean so that it doesn't overheat. Uh, it's not that bad of a job to replace, but it does cost a hefty, I think, 250 bucks or so, depending on which model of trailer you have. Of course, the older ones, uh, they get a little more expensive, but there's a whole computer module in there and everything, and it's very, it, it's expensive, and I think it could be frightening to most people. So keep up the maintenance on that. Vacuum all the stuff out of there on a regular, uh, I'd say at probably three, four times a year, or, or no less than twice a year. And uh, you can hear it like mine's going. That means that that fan that's trying to blow the hot air out is full of gook. And I, I need to get in there. That's one of my things on my list. So that's it, guys. That's, uh, that's the show there. Um, I hope this stuff helps you guys. Like I said, we're in some crazy fucking times, man. Who knows what the hell is going to go on? And there's, there's so much more that I'm worried about and so many other solutions that I'm excited about to share with you guys. Uh, but go down. I'm going to talk next about some accessories on the Facebook group that's up and in it. We're going to talk about skylight vent covers, uh, about what to do to keep the uh, air circulating inside your uh, trailer. Uh, we're going to talk about a, a solution to your AC unit so you don't blow the one you have out. Remember, guys, these things are made for weekend warriors not to live in. If you need an AC, um, I've got a couple solutions for you. You might want to check it out. Uh, storage and organization tips and uh, things you can also do to insulate your windows. So go, be sure to check out Up and In It uh, private group at Facebook. I screen everybody to make sure if there's any assholes. I want this to be a, a family of friends of people who are like-minded that care about the earth and care about making money and taking care of themselves and their families and bettering their lives instead of sitting there eating fucking hot dogs and scratching their fucking belly buttons in their buttholes. <laughs> but to be kind. All right. We, we all like to joke around and everything, but people are assholes nowadays. It's fucking weird. So, yeah, check it out. Um, there's also the uh, podcast. If you guys that you guys are listening now, you can find that on Apple iTunes. You can find it on Spotify. You can watch it live on YouTube. Uh, I do stuff on TikTok, Instagram. So go out there and, and there's stuff I do on all those on most of them. That's not anywhere else. So as I always say, guys, uh, go out there and have yourself a near life experience. <laughs> don't lose your muchness carry on the fire human up live it love it own it bone it